Cape Cod Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and CapeCon.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. We're going in-depth on the ballot questions in advance of the November 4th election. In this segment, we're talking about ballot question number four, which would grant earned sick time to employees. Speaking against the question is Bill Vernon, who is state director for the National Federation of Independent Business, the Massachusetts branch. Bill, welcome to the show. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Why don't we start by having you introduce yourself to the listeners and how you are involved in in this issue. Okay. Name is Bill Vernon. I'm the Massachusetts Director for the National Federation of Independent Business, which is a small business advocacy group nationwide. We In Massachusetts, we have about 8,000 members. Uh, average number of workers in each member company is five, and about half of our members are one in two. We think we really represent uh, Main Street businesses, small businesses uh, in Massachusetts, uh, and uh, give them voice in legislative issues at the State House and then nationally in Congress. Do you have a sense of, on the Cape, how many members you have? Uh, I think we have about 800 members on the Cape. The Cape is, as probably everybody knows, very small business uh, oriented. Their economy depends on small business. And we have more members in Barnstable County than any other county in Massachusetts. Interesting. Now, let's talk about some background on this particular issue. Why do you think it is coming up now? Uh, Why did it rise to the surface this year? Do you have a sense of that? Well, I think there's a national movement, frankly, uh, surrounding sick time uh, and uh, having state or local governments mandate that companies offer sick time. Uh, It's come to Massachusetts. They there was uh, it was before the legislature. Uh, the legislation never made it out of committee. Um, I believe that there was a uh, political decision made to bring this issue to the ballot. Uh, that people thought that it would be helpful uh, to certain candidates if if it were on the ballot, and that's where we are in Massachusetts. Uh, two other states passed. Uh, Uh, legislation recently, uh, California and Connecticut. Uh, I would argue, and I think it's quite clear, that neither of those bills are as uh, comprehensive and as rigid as the one that's on the ballot in Massachusetts. And let's get into that a little bit more. Those other two bills, um, talk about what what the difference is with the Massachusetts bill, if you know. Yeah. In Connecticut, they have a, a sick leave bill. It applies only to companies in the service industry with more than 50 workers. In in California, uh, it it would grant only three days sick leave, whereas Massachusetts grants five, and uh, it also exempts government. California exempts government, which I think is an important issue for taxpayers in terms of the cost of the Massachusetts uh, question on the ballot. The Massachusetts question on the ballot would would apply to all workers and all employers, uh, uh, part time, seasonal. Um, full-time um, workers, and it would make the distinction that uh, if you are a, an employer with less than 11 employees, it's unpaid leave. If you're an employer with more than 11, it's paid leave. So in Massachusetts, it sounds like a much more comprehensive bill than, than in some of the other places. What about other states across, because we're only talking then about three yeah. states across the country, what's happened in other states? Anything on this uh, topic? I think that, uh, and there's one other thing about Massachusetts, is it applies also to what I would call family leave. If a family member is sick as well, you can you would be eligible to use your sick leave to care for a spouse, child, uh, parent or in-law, uh, and um, the Massachusetts law would also allow you to take sick leave in one- and two-hour increments. So it is quite uh, quite comprehensive and rigid. Um, the question with regard to uh, what's going on in other states, I think that this is the uh, beginning, as I said, of a national movement. I expect that there will be attempts to either pass these in the in legislatures around the country um, 
either about 20 legislatures or on the ballot in the in the 2016 election. And let's get into right right into why your organization is against it. This is the National Federation of Independent Business, the Massachusetts branch. Talk about why you oppose this bill. Uh, we oppose it. Uh, Frankly, I think if you ask our members, it comes, it goes right to the core of what it means to uh, run your own business, own your own business, design a uh, comprehend, a compensation package that uh, will attract workers, uh, keep workers, and and hopefully make your business uh, profitable and growing in the future. Uh, we feel on this particular bill that one size does not fit all. Um, this bill treats uh, the mom and pop store on Main Street, as if it were Google, uh, there's no difference, uh, and uh, we think that that's uh, not. It's it's unfortunate that we're at this situation and these issues weren't, you know, worked out uh, prior to having the question on the ballot. It'll take away small business owners' flexibility to design a, a compensation package. It will hurt workers because uh, the flexibility to include. Uh, uh, Health care benefits, retirement benefits, vacation time, uh, even wages uh, will be damaged because of the inflexibility of this law, this mandate, which will affect all employers in the state. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. We're going in-depth on the ballot questions in advance of the November 4th election. We're giving listeners both sides on every question. And in this segment, we're talking about ballot question number four, earned sick time for employees. Bill Vernon is speaking against the question. Now, the people in favor of this question argue that providing sick time reduces employee turnover, increases productivity, helps their bottom line. How do you respond to that? Well, first of all, we're not... Uh, We're certainly not opposed to sick leave as a benefit. Uh, We think that employers who can afford sick leave... can can offer it, uh, should do it. Uh, we think there are a number of workers, however, who uh, probably prefer higher wages, longer vacation time. There's people in different situations. Some people want time off to take care of a family member or to take care of uh, a child. Uh, some people want part-time work. Some people want, want to work in a season. Uh, some people want more income. Their spouse offers the benefits. So we think that uh, for or, uh, to accommodate uh, different kinds of companies and different kinds of workers, different kinds of companies. Some companies n- can easily survive and, and operate with a person out sick or two people. Uh, large office space, people can work from home if they have an office job. But if you have a, a retail job or you're a, a, um, a lifeguard at a, at a YMCA, that job has to be replaced and that company has to pay twice then if they're paying for sick leave and for that person who's the replacement worker, the company, the business requires that somebody be at a particular post, uh, and we feel that the this this uh, proposal would affect uh, also companies in a different different ways, affect workers in different ways, and people just don't all work, and and uh, companies don't all operate the same way. Now, of course, most large companies provide this benefit already, um, but but your organization, National Federation of Independent Business, and you talked about it at the beginning of the segment here, represents mostly the smaller companies, and those are the ones that you say would really uh, f- feel the pinch with this particular bill. Why do you think that, that small businesses, why do you think they should not have to provide this benefit that most larger businesses do provide? Well... What we found in our studies was that um, a bill similar to this would cost Massachusetts 16,000 jobs uh, and $8.4 billion in economic activity over four or five years concentrated in small business. Uh, And we're a small business state. The Cape is a small business area, and uh, the economy depends on the – on small businesses being able to grow and create jobs. Uh, Frankly, over the past decade or more, Massachusetts has not created uh, net new jobs. I think we finally got to our uh, 1999 level this year, Uh, and that's because small businesses have not been able to grow jobs. And we have too many Massachusetts-only regulations, too many Massachusetts-only laws, uh, taxes that impose costs on small 
small business, make it more more expensive to create jobs and grow and prosper. And uh, unfortunately, question four is going to be another one of those, if it passes, another one of those Massachusetts-only uh, laws that uh, make it more and more difficult for small businesses to operate in the state. And I think your group is also joining with some other uh, large groups representing different types of businesses who are opposed to this. Is that true? That's right. Uh, we're the association, uh, the committee, the No on Four Committee, uh, www.noonquestion4.org, has uh, has uh, the Retailers Association and the Restaurant Association. Um, along with NFIB at the head, but we've also uh, received endorsements from the Food Association, uh, from the Package Store Association, and uh, more than 20 chambers of commerce uh, from around the state who also support our effort uh, to uh, oppose Question 4. Do you have any sense of how many businesses in your organization already provide this benefit? I don't, but I would say that more than 2 million people, uh, of about 3 million workers, uh, the proponents would say that the more would admit that more than 2 million receive sick leave. I would say in my organization it's probably about half rather than two-thirds. It's, it's certainly less than the statewide uh, provision. I would also argue that of those million that the proponents talk about, many, uh, maybe a third of them are represented by unions where sick leave is down the list on benefits, uh, certainly in a secondary position to vacation and, and uh, wages and health care benefits and retirement benefits. Um, an, another a large number of those people who, without sick leave, are consultants, ones and twos that you know, many of whom I may represent, um, uh, or consultants who, you know, frankly, sick leave law is not going to help them. And again, uh, they like to be independent. They like to the the ability to set their own hours, and many of them uh, make a good wage. And and again, sick leave probably wouldn't help them anyway because they need they need to be at work to make money. And that's another thing about my membership is that a sick leave law, uh, there will be a lot of people uh, still without sick leave even after this law uh, because my members have to open the store uh, if they're sick. The store doesn't get open. The business doesn't get operated. And unfortunately, we're out of time. Bill, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. We've been talking about ballot question four to give earned sick time for employees. We're hearing from both sides on all the ballot questions in advance of the November 4th election to hear interviews pro and con on all the ballot questions, as well as interviews with all the candidates in local contested races. Go to our website, capecod.com, and click on the election banner. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible Responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at CapeConBroadcasting.com.